great day of celebration for Carolyn. I know that we're broken, bruised, and it's never easy to lose a loved one to the grave, but we are so confident in the Lord Jesus Christ knowing that he has given us eternal life, that this is not the end, but a grand and glorious beginning. So we come today to say we love you. to me in the dark times of my life, when, when I'm hurting, when I'm bruised, when I'm, when I'm confused, and I, can't, I don't hear an audible voice, but somehow I feel his comforting spirit as if to say, I'm with you, and it'll be all right. So I believe that's what God is trying to say to you today, it'll be all right. He says, call on me, and I'll hear you. If he takes note of sparrows that fall from the sky and clothes the lilies of the field, you know he hears us. And he loves us enough to embrace us in this time of, in, in this t uh, hour of concern. And he'll bring you the comfort and the clarity and the understanding. And it's okay to cry because tears are a language that God understands. But one of the things that we do today is because we're saved and because Carol knew the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior, we gather here with great hope. Paul said, if in this life alone we have hope, we're all men most miserable. In other words, it would be a miserable time to think that our loved one was not ready to meet God, to think that there is a heaven and there is a hell, but to know with confidence today that we come rejoicing that she is in a place called heaven. And because of Jesus, we have blessed hope. And this Bible says the, that the, this hope is an anchor that holds fast and sure. It's a hope, and it reaches beyond the disappointments and the heartaches of this present world. It's a hope that reaches beyond the agony and the pain and the sorrow that we're experiencing right now. It's a hope that reaches beyond sicknesses and death. It's a hope that reaches beyond funeral homes and grave sites. It's a hope that reaches to a place called heaven. A place, John 14 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house and many mansions. We're not so would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm coming again. And I'm going to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's death to the believer. Jesus, that morning, came and got Carolyn and took her to where he was. And so we come today knowing that our loved one is in a better place. I mean, you know, when you think about heaven, you think about no more suffering, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more brokenness. And, 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 and God will wipe away every tear. So we're here today, and although part of us grieves and says, we're going to miss this girl, we're going to miss her, we love her, we must also say, praise God. She has said goodbye to this old, sinful, hurting, broken world. No more cross to bear, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more brokenness. But today she lives and abides in the house of the Lord, free from sickness, pain, and sorrow. And so part of us must rejoice with her. Because I'm telling you something, folks. If she had the opportunity to come back today and go back to that nursing home, she would not have come back. But she's got a mansion over on the other side. Let us pray. Father, how we love you. We thank you for the promises of your word. What a good God you are. In times like this, the truth becomes so real and powerful and dynamic to us. Because we realize that the death is not the end, but the beginning of the glorious life. And Lord, it lets us know that we too are looking to you, the author, the finisher of our faith, knowing that you are our help, you're our strength, you're our courage, and you're our comfort. Bless this family in Jesus' name. Today marks a long journey, the end of a long journey for the family. You've been taking care of Carolyn for years, and she's been going to the nursing home and visiting her. I've been doing the same, uh, enjoyed my time talking to her. And she was an inspiration to me because of uh, how she could live through what she was living through and still be pleasant and still smile and still laugh 
in spite of all that you face. That was an inspiration. And it's all because of God's amazing grace. God's grace. His grace is not amazing. Just because His grace saves us. But His grace sustains us. His grace keeps us. His grace abides with us. And that's the wonderful thing. When you and I were not able to be with Carolyn, He was there. And He never left her bedside. And I'm so glad that she's in that land today where she has that new body. And as Pastor Jeff said, she wouldn't come back if every one of us called her back. Because all she would be doing is calling <coughs> us there to that wonderful place called heaven. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Christ as Lord and Savior, and she served him faithfully all her life. She loved the Lord with all her heart. I can remember praying with her many times. And when you would pray with Carolyn, you, she would get involved in that prayer with you. She responded. She reacted. She was touched by God. And I've seen her cry and cry out to God as she surrendered her whole self to the Lord. It wasn't just a sweet little prayer that you prayed. When you prayed for Carolyn, revival broke out. The anointing began to fall, and she got touched by the power of the Holy Ghost. She loved church, and when she was able to come, she would come to every service. She would ride the van and enter the church with a big smile on her face, greet everybody with friendly smile, and, and, and everyone loved Carolyn, and everyone was excited to see her because she was a very special and unique person. She was kind-hearted and sweet and humble, and she was always thankful and appreciative 
for everything anyone would ever do. Nothing was small, Carolyn. Everything was a big deal for her. No matter what you did, she was thrilled of it. She was excited over it. Uh, every visit uh, found her filled with excitement. And, and, and many times, as Frank said earlier, you go to see her and, and you, you may try to cheer her up and just thinking about how the, the struggle she had, but, but the joy that she had and the peace that she had. And listen, the presence of God that she had on her life. And so you could feel and sense there was something there more than a hurting, broken person. You could sense and feel that the faithful God that said, I'll never leave you, don't forsake it, was right there with her. And so she was so excited to see you and so appreciative, no matter who you were or how long you have not been there. Every card cheered her up and made her day and meant so much to her. When we would do Christmas gifts, our nursing home ministry would carry little gifts to every person. And, and Easter, we would carry little eggs with, 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 uh, with uh, comments and, and money inside those little plastic eggs that would say, have a good day. We love you. We're thinking about it. And, and these things enthused her and, and thrilled her and made her day just to think that we were thinking about her. And then the CDs of the services. She couldn't come to church. But she would play them over and over and over because in her mind she felt like she was there in church praising, glorifying God. They were her place of encouragement and strength, and they fed her. Carolyn lived with a disability all her life. She struggled much. We know that. Her life was not easy. Not many people could have that good spirit that she had going through what she had. I, 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 she never had some of the things we take for granted. The things that we have every day, she didn't have them, but she had Jesus. And she was content, and she loved God, and she suffered and endured much pain, but she held on to her faith, and she had a peace that many do not understand. Her relationship with God was real, and although she didn't have material things that we have today, she had something special. She had a relationship with God that we only pray about or read about, but she had a tangible reality touch of God. She knew God. She felt him in her room. She felt him when she called on him in time of need. She could feel and sense that God was, was there with her. That's what kept her going. Many people would have given up a long time ago, but she kept going because there was the presence of God in that room. Family, I know you're going to miss her, but part of us must celebrate with her. She's made it home, and if she were here today, she would say this to us. Every tear, Every hurt, every struggle, every pain was worth it all. So if you don't know Jesus, you need to call on him. Because Carolyn's death preaches this message to us. It is a message that in the midst of pain and hurt and sorrow, God is still good. God is an amazing God. Oh, if you don't have him, you don't know what you're missing. In an hour like this, God gives us three powerful promises that we can anchor our soul in. Promises that comfort and sustain and bring peace and soothe our hearts and, and, and our pains and enlightens our understanding. First of all, the word promises that the Lord is right here, right now with us. Now you say, Pastor, I don't feel him. I don't see him. That makes no matter. He's here. He's, he's right here with every one of us to bear us up on the wings of the morning. He knows your heart. He sees your broken. Nobody can do you like Jesus. He is the healer of broken hearts. He is the encourager of those that have lost their way. He is the Prince of Peace. And he's here to say, listen, I told you I, I would never leave you nor forsake you. You don't have to go through this by yourself. I'm a God that's here with you. The Holy Spirit is present to bear us up on the wings of the morning and give us a strength and a hope and an encouragement. He's that rock that you can lean on in present help in time of trouble. He's strength and peace. He's comfort to the broken and refuge to the sick, to the weak. He promises my grace is sufficient for every need. So here's what we do. How do we face this? How do we handle this? By His grace. And so I encourage you to call on Him. All you got to do is call on him. He said, and I'll answer. Tears are a language God understands, but God hears tears. And God loves you. And all you got to do is call, help me, Jesus. There's been many times in my life that's all I could do is say, help. Somebody said, I don't know how to pray, preacher. I don't know. Listen, I don't have to go to college or seminary to know how to pray. I just say, help me, Lord. 
help me, Jesus. I need your help. I'm, I'm hurting. I'm broken. Nothing is, is, is going my way, and, and all of life is turned upside down. But can you help me, Lord? And I've always found that he has always been there to help me and encourage me, and I didn't have to face it all by myself. David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. That rock is Jesus. Number two, not only is God with you, he promises this. Oh, man, this is good. He said, this is not your loved one here. This is the body that she lived in. Man is a soul that has a spirit that lives in a body. And when death occurs, the house dies. But the soul and spirit goes on to be with the Lord. Your, your, your spirit looks just like you. Did you know that? Only with an extreme makeover. Man, uh, no flaws, no, no, no blemishes. The beautiful you. And so that's why we'll recognize one another in heaven. And so uh, the Lord says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So what is death? Death is closing our eyes down here, opening our eyes and seeing the hand, nail-starred hand of Jesus Christ reach out to us, take us by the hand. Now, I can't prove this by Scripture, but, you know, this is my sermon. I'll preach it my way, okay? <laughs> I, I believe this is what happened. Not only does Jesus come and heavenly hosts come, I believe our families come by the I believe there's mama, and there's dad, and there's those that have gone on. What a comfort to see them walk in that nursing home room and say, Carolyn, how you doing? I'll tell you, she shouted out of there. She praised God out of there. And she is today enjoying the blessings of God. So she's with the Lord. Now, this final truth that to me gives us all hope and encouragement, it says to us that one day there is going to be a great family reunion in heaven. It's going to be great. Loved ones that have gone on the family circle that's been broken will be restored and never be broken again. So a great part of heaven will be we'll stroll over heaven with our family. Now, I don't know if you believe that or not, but we're going to be reunited in a place called heaven, and it's going to be wonderful, and we're, we are going to see loved ones. I can't wait to see Jesus. But I'm telling you, today's Mother's Day. My mother died in 2008. I can't wait to see Mama. I'm telling you, man. Every day I think of her. I, we are getting ready to bury uh, 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 Melissa Poole, my, my, my sister-in-law's mom, today, Mother's Day, over on the other side of this lot. And it's a horrible time to say goodbye and farewell to Mama on Mother's Day especially. But I think about when I get down and out. And you know this. Time helps, but time don't heal. But when I get to think, when I have those days, when I just have those miserable days, those days you're down and out, and, and it's all, and you're, you're going, God, where are you, God? What's going on, God? I don't feel you. All of a sudden, as if the Holy Spirit begins to bring a message to me and says, remember, they're not in that grave. They're not covered up by that dirt. That's the house they lived in. They're with Jesus over on the other side. And one day, if you remain faithful, you'll see them again. So my prayer and my challenge to every person here is that you serve the Lord. Is that you call on the name of the Lord. Somebody said, Frank, it's too hard to serve the Lord. Listen, I'm going to tell you something beneath the strength. It's hard to go to hell and easy to go to heaven. You know why I say easy to go to heaven? Jesus paid the price. That if we accept him, he did all the work. And to get to hell, you got to trample over his love, his blood, his, the cross, all the Holy Spirit wooing. He did everything to say, you can go to heaven. Say, Pastor, I've got a bad past. Don't worry about it. When Jesus washes you clean, you ain't got no past. And he'll save you. So today, to those of us that are saved, this is not goodbye to us. This is farewell. And believe it, listen, folks, we're going to see her again, but it's going to be sooner than we think. We're living in an uncertain time. We've never seen a time like this where we can't even have church because of this situation. This is, somebody says, is this the end of the world? I, I, I wouldn't say that. I would say it is the beginning of the times that we need to open our eyes and get ready and draw closer to the Lord. And if you ever have given any thought to your soul, do it today. If you've ever went to church or, 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 or read your Bible or prayed, do it today. Today is the day of salvation. I thank Carolyn that I was her pastor. She'd been a member of my church for many, many years. 
I thank God for the love that she showed me and the kindness and how that she inspired me living with the struggles she lived with. It makes my struggles seem nothing. And sometimes when you feel like you can't go on, think about others. I mean, she went through a whole lot. She suffered a lot. But I never saw one time she didn't worship God and love Him. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for the life of Carol Brown. Today we do not say goodbye, we say farewell because we know that this dear sister is with you and that one day we will be reunited and we'll join her in a place called heaven and we'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But God, if there be family members or friends that do not know Jesus, let this death speak to them of their need for God and let their life change. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and God bless you. If you haven't had a chance to speak with your family, uh, we'll take a few minutes to do that.